All right, uh, last video we stopped at um, self-check number seven. And the next step in the, uh, in the book here is what's called the capacitance accuracy test. Now, I'm not sure how much of this I can do because I don't have the fancy standard capacitors that's required for the full calibration, but we'll see what we can do now. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but um, there's a real interesting set of BNC connections. One is just loops, and then one is this weird uh, short. So people who are familiar with the little box that you can plug onto this thing, you can run the open and short by by just doing open with nothing in it, and then there's a little piece of copper, like a C C shaped piece of copper that you shove into it, and that does the uh, that does the short. Um, so let me show you what I found out. So having everything shielded is always a good idea and you get more accurate things, but for crude measurements, I thought this was gonna be just fine. So I have um, just put on these two BNCs here, and I have two BNCs here, all right? And there's still a Kelvin contact that's not shielded, but there's still a Kelvin contact. There's a, a connection between these two and a connection between these two. And when I put a capacitor on these test leads, it, it, does, read, it does read a value. Um, let's see here, down. So it's a 10 nanofarad capacitor, and it's measuring 10 nanofarads. So I thought, okay, everything's, everything's great. Now, in order to zero out any problems with your cabling, you just hit the zero button. You can set the cable length to some internal software that takes into account cable length, zero and one meter. So these are real short, so this is zero. And uh, this switch here is for DC bias. We'll have to play with that way in the future. But this is an open condition, so we just push the open button here. And it should do what a normal, um, like a VNA, cal this, is, this is a vector network analyzer, a kind of a crude one, right? It's a vector voltmeter. So when you hit the zero, um, you can see it says cal, but then it gives you an error. So w what's going on here, okay? Let me remove these. Okay, now I'm going to do what the, what the manual says to do here, and that is to put one BNC over here and one BNC over here. Now, these BNCs are not floating. They're all shorted together. They're, they're all on a piece of metal, so it's not like the ground is the problem. It must be the shielding, because when I put on shielded uh, wires from each one and I hit the open, it cals, it cals correctly. Now, why did it cal correctly? I don't know, but let me kind of, what it does is it cals for each frequency range. So if you watch this when I hit the open, it runs through all the different frequencies and so it does an open calculation at each, uh, each of those. But it doesn't do it with just a wire in between. So it seems to be very susceptible to shielding. So. Um, I have some cables on order that are supposedly shielded uh, cables for VNAs or um, uh, LCR meters. So we'll see what happens there. Now the short, the short condition is is even more hilarious. Okay, and that's that diagram I was showing you. All right. So now we have a, a loop on this one, a loop on this one, and in fact, just with that, we could hit the open. All right, and you can see that it's it, it's cowling the open just fine. It worked great. And then here's the short. <laughs> this is hilarious. You put these together, okay? There's like this H, H in there that everything's shorter together. Now everything's shorter together. Now we can hit the short button. And once again, it, it goes exactly through the short conditions, right? And if I used my, my little guys here and I just connected the two connectors with this, it'll fail. It needs, it needs shielding, so I'm very confused about that. But anyway, um, in order to proceed with step 
8 or whatever this is, we need to have these these two cable assemblies anyway. It says to do that. So anyway, let's see here. If the short and open termination standard available, use them for that, blah, blah, blah. Set cable length to zero. Connect the terminals with a BNC as shown in A. Okay, as shown in A is like this. Press the zero open button and uh, and wait. Oh no, I think this is off. So I think it wants me to do the zero thing. Okay, so I do the zero and it, it does its zero thing. Oh, okay. Okay, it's just asking me to, I, I, I was ahead of the game. Um, it's asking me to do exactly what I did. I did a zero and then I'm gonna do a short. So I do the zero and I do the short. Okay, now everything is good. Disconnect the cables and s connect a one picofarad standard capacitor, which I don't have. I don't have. I might not be able to proceed until I get that cable in the mail, so. Test. Change the capacitor values, apply the multipliers and change. It just wants me to check to see if it's measuring if it's measuring things correctly. Now I do have some capacitors that I'm pretty happy with. They're they're 0.3%. The capacitors that you can buy for this thing for the standards are insane. They're like 0.01% capacitance or something. They're ridiculous. Um, I don't know how much that would cost. So you, you couldn't do it yourself. You would have had to mail this in somewhere, have them do it. But let me, uh, let me put my cheesy cable back on just so we can look at some things for de for today. Um, let's put these on. Okay. Standard capacitor. Okay. So, uh, let's start with this one. This is a nice one. Put this on. This is a 180. And there you go, 180.4. That's that's pretty accurate, right? It's a plus or minus 0.3%, and that's uh, let's see, 1% would be 1.8, 1. 1. 1. Yeah, it's it's measuring well. Um so that's good. So that's my standard capacitor here, it's a Soviet capacitor. Um, this is another 0.3%. This one is 15.72. Let's see what he measures. 15.9. Uh, so uh, this doesn't seem good to me. It should be 15.72. Um, but again, this is at 10 kilohertz, so I don't know. And then the last one I'll try is this big jobber here. And this one should be 100, exactly. And it's 101, so it's 1% out. So I think the calibration is not correct. I believe this should be measuring very, very close to, 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 to 100. Let's see, let's verify that with the uh, little handheld meter. I'm going to use my uh, Keysight 1733C. I'm going to set it for 10 kilohertz, so we'll be measuring apples and apples. And let me, let me hook this one up. And yeah, there you go. See, 10.1, 100.1. So yeah, this one's pretty accurate. Uh, let's measure this one. This one's supposed to measure 15.72. 15.74, okay. And my 180. My 180 is measuring, oh, look at that, 182.8, huh, interesting. Uh, wow, I believe this now over this one. And that's what I would have expected. This should be a better instrument. So, um, 
So it's good in some places and bad in other places. And it doesn't know how to measure resistors. Oof. You put a resistor on this thing and it just fails miserably. Um, let's go ahead and do an, a, an open short cal on this to get rid of these uh, uh, cable problems. So maybe that was maybe that was our problem here. We'll do a cal. We'll do an open and do the short. All right, and then we'll do the measurement. Ah, there we go. I don't know what I did last, I did something wrong last time. So 179.69, so there we go. So that's that's a that's a pretty good number there. That's very, very close to 180. This was very, very close to 180. Um, I don't remember what the specifications on the two meters are, what percent this one is, what, what percent this one is, but uh, they're both measuring values that I'd be perfectly happy with. So um, yeah, um, yeah, this, in order to go the next step further, I think I'm going to have to get some uh, leads. Let's see if there's anything else we can do. All right, so the next section is resistance accuracy. We could take a look at that. Um, Okay, so we do R. Auto, auto, high res is on, self test is off, trigger, internal, fully clockwise, multiplier is times one, and then you stick on some, some known resistors. So here's my 0.01% resistors. Uh, this one is. 10 ohms, so I'll stick on 10 ohms. Oops. And it's giving me an error. Let me bump up the frequency. Uh, there we go. Uh, I only liked one frequency, 40 kilohertz. So yeah, that's, that's bad. All right, let's go up to, uh, that's, go up to 100 ohms. Ninety-eight. Yeah, see, that's bad. I'll uh, we'll go to a thousand ohms. That's bad. <laughs> I mean, they're in the ballpark, but it's a pretty big ballpark. Uh, Yeah, this one's not even measuring. So yeah, there's something wrong with the, the resistance measurement. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out what's wrong with the bridge. There's some something wrong in the resistance bridge on this thing. Um, let's go back up to something it did know how to measure. Let's go back up to 100 ohms here. And let's get it, let's see if it can measure, um, we'll go to impedance. I'm looking for the uh, phase angle. So yeah, 0.2 degrees of phase angle. These are wire wound resistors, so the um, there'll be a little bit of, a little bit of inductance. Well, let's go ahead and measure inductance, see if it knows anything. 1.4 micro Henry's. No, nah, I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I think it's resistance bridge is way off.
Let's measure them with this thing here. Do a sanity check. If you have, you know, if you have two things, you can measure them against each other. That's always a really good thing as a sanity check to see if, see if things are working, working the way you think they should work. Uh, let's see. Uh, auto. Uh, R. 100.1 ohms. Yeah, see? Yeah, this is fine. And if we do a Z on this, we get 100.04 and we get 0.1 degree. Yeah. What about L? We'll just measure L on this thing. Oh, four microhenries. Oh. Well, maybe there is inductance on these capacitors, in these resistors. Oh, okay. Well, you may need to find some non-inductive resistors for this uh, for this test. Interesting. All right. Hmm. Well, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get this thing is to learn more about all of the. Uh, let's see. What's the good word? Parasitic the parasitic values of components, right? A resistor is not just a resistor. An inductor is not just an inductor, you know? They all have resistance. They all have capacitance. They all have inductance. They all, they all have other things, you know, like capacitors have chemistry in them. Uh, yeah, there's lots of stuff going on besides that value that gets stamped on the outside. And that's why machines like this are nice. And uh, uh, this, one has, this one has done me well. Anyway, yeah, enough for the video today. I'm going to wait till I get some test leads and we'll see if that fixes some of the things up.